This video is part two of a two-part series. Check out part one before watching this video. Last year, I proposed the idea of extremely low-detail students walking around in Yandere Simulator's school to create the impression of a lively environment with a large population. Most people disliked this idea. The idea might have been rejected due to the way I proposed it. The low-detail students don't have to be solid color silhouettes. Persona 5 does the exact same thing. Faceless, low-poly characters with extremely simple textures walk through the school hallways and through the streets. The player can't actually interact with these characters. They only exist to create the impression of a lively world. This is exactly what I proposed for Yandere Simulator. Except my low-detail students would need to be able to react to things like murder, corpses, body parts, blood, weapons, etc. Maybe, now that I can hold up Persona 5 as an example of this feature done properly, the fanbase of Yandere Simulator might be more receptive towards the idea. Sometimes, when the protagonist is walking to school in the morning, he overhears a conversation taking place between two other students. Some of these conversations are related to the game's story, but other conversations simply grant the player some useful information, such as a way to boost their stats. There are a lot of features in Yandere Simulator that you wouldn't really know about unless you saw the YouTube video where I introduce those features. For example, you can write a fake suicide note and put it next to a girl's shoes after pushing her off the roof to make it look like she decided to take her own life. But how would you ever know to do that if you hadn't seen my YouTube video about it? There's no way to find out about this within the game itself. Perhaps Yandere-chan could learn about things like this in short cutscenes that play before she arrives at school. During these short cutscenes, Yandere-chan would overhear conversations that introduce game mechanics that you might not have discovered on your own. Every story cutscene in Persona 3 and 4 took place in a three-dimensional environment, but some of the story cutscenes in Persona 5 are just 2D illustrations with 3D character models on top. Sometimes there's a foreground layer that appears in front of the characters, or a single part of the scene that moves, to help enforce the illusion. It's obvious why the developers chose to do this. Creating a high-quality 3D environment with dozens of models and textures in it is very expensive and time-consuming, but creating a single high-quality painting takes far less time and money, while serving roughly the same purpose as a 3D environment. I have a lot of ideas for story cutscenes in Yandere Simulator, but I can't justify spending a lot of resources on things that aren't related to gameplay. If I follow Persona 5's example and set the cutscenes in extremely convincing 2D illustrations, then I could have a lot more story cutscenes without needing to spend a lot of time and money putting together 3D environments. In Metal Gear Solid 2, there's a guard who is listening to music on headphones. You can run around and even throw stuff right next to him, and he won't even notice, because his music is so loud. When I first saw this, I was... Wait a minute. I'm supposed to be talking about Persona 5. Some of the students that walk around the school in Persona 5 are wearing headphones. This doesn't have an effect on Persona 5's gameplay, but it is something that would definitely make a difference for Yandere-chan. A student wearing headphones and listening to loud music wouldn't hear the sound of footsteps or the screams of people being murdered nearby. A student wearing headphones could also be an obstacle. Normally, you can lure someone away from their usual spot by making a noise nearby. Okay, fine! I won't call the police! Oh, 
look, this is a bad time for me. We'll talk about this later. Just don't do it. <laughs> But if someone is wearing headphones, you wouldn't be able to lure them away with distracting sounds, because they wouldn't be able to hear the noises you're making. It's fun to imagine the potential situations that can arise from a student wearing headphones. Where does Yandere-chan carry her weapons? Perhaps she hides them in the waistband of her panties. Perhaps she has a special skirt with built-in pockets. Another option is to give her a book bag. However, I've always been worried that it would look awkward if she was carrying a book bag at all times. The protagonist of Persona 5 is almost never seen without his book bag. The other students at school are usually carrying book bags too. It doesn't look awkward at all. In fact, it looks completely natural. I now feel much more comfortable with the idea of putting book bags on characters. But I still need to investigate the potential downsides, such as clipping during murder animations, and the question of what happens to a book bag after a character has been killed. Do they drop it, or does it stay on their body? Can you loot a character's book bag after they're dead? Can a book bag become bloody? Can you dispose of one in the incinerator? There are a lot of questions that need to be considered, so I'm not ready to make any big decisions just yet. Persona 3, Persona 5, Natsuhiro High School, and real-life Japanese high schools have stores where students can buy food and various supplies. I've always wanted to add something like this to Yandere Simulator, but the problem is the person operating the store. If they are behind a counter, behind a window, in a locked room, there's no way to reach them, which means there's no way to stop them from reporting you to the police if you commit murder, which means that being spotted by them is an immediate game over. Some characters, like the guidance counselor and the headmaster, are invincible. You will never be able to kill them, and committing a crime in front of them will result in instantly being apprehended, with zero chance of escape. This makes sense, considering their importance to the setting and the story. However, it would be weird if the person running the school store falls into the same category just because they're behind a counter. If I want to put a school store in the Yandere Simulator, I'll need to think carefully about exactly how the clerk affects gameplay. In the second half of Persona 5, there's a culture festival at school. This is something that shows up in most anime set in a high school. During a culture festival, every classroom transforms into some sort of attraction, like a cafe or a haunted house. Culture festivals can also involve fun events like a scavenger hunt, an eating contest, or a sports competition. I think it would be really fun to have a culture festival take place in Yandere Simulator School. The only downside is that it would involve dozens, possibly hundreds, of new models, new animations, and new voiced lines that would only be used during the one day that the festival takes place. That's a lot of work for something that would only happen very briefly. This makes me wonder if the festival should last for an entire week. It could be the week when Senpai's sister is the rival. Every day, Senpai and his sister would visit a new attraction around the school and every attraction would present a new opportunity to eliminate her. Because of the tremendous amount of assets that would be required to add a culture festival to the game, I think of it as a stretch goal. In other words, it's something that would only get into the game if we raise enough money to surpass the budget that we need to make the base game. At one point in the game, a certain character becomes suspicious of the protagonist and begins following him around school and around town, 
hoping to catch him doing something suspicious. While they do this, they try to act innocent and pretend that they are not stalking him. I can think of three reasons why a character might demonstrate similar behavior in Yandere Simulator. Number one, if the player's reputation meter rises too high, then other students might start following Yandere-chan around school because they want to be her friend and get to know her better. This, of course, is an obstacle for someone who is trying to get away with murder without any witnesses. Number two, if the player uses seduction on another student too many times, that student might get a crush on Yandere-chan and begin following her around school desperately trying to flirt with her. Number three, if the player commits murder in front of a witness, but the police can't find any evidence linking Yandere-chan to the crime, then the police won't be able to arrest her. As a result, the witness might become obsessed with the idea of following Yandere-chan around school with a camera, waiting for her to do something violent so they can catch it on film and get her arrested. In a previous video, I described the tremendous amount of time and resources that would be necessary to implement a small town in Yandere Simulator. I proposed the idea of having a single street where Yandere-chan could buy things, get part-time jobs, sabotage dates, etc. It was hard to pitch that kind of feature without an example that I could point to. Thankfully, Persona 5 has come to my rescue. Persona 5 has multiple streets with various storefronts and perfectly demonstrates exactly the idea that I was trying to communicate in my earlier video. Sometimes, when the player enters a store, the camera stays outside the store, and the player simply sees a menu. Other times, when the player enters a store, we see a completely new scene. The player can't actually walk around, though. And there is another variety of store where the player actually can walk around and examine things in the store. The interfaces inside of these stores are incredibly stylish. It's a joy to simply navigate around in the menus and watch all of the cool animations. And the store owners are interesting characters with tons of personality. If I do end up adding a street to Yandere Simulator so the player can buy things, I will strive to match the quality of Persona 5's streets and stores. Check it out. When it's raining, he takes out an umbrella. But if he goes underneath a structure that protects him from the rain, he puts away the umbrella. And if he steps out into the rain again, he takes the umbrella back out. This has nothing whatsoever to do with Yandere Simulator. It's just fun to watch him put it away and take it out again. I am extremely grateful for Persona 5. It's full of useful reference material for a game set in a Japanese high school. It can help me demonstrate lots of ideas that I've had difficulty explaining in the past, and it's shown me numerous ways that Yandere Simulator can improve. I simply couldn't resist dedicating some time to examining Persona 5 and describing all of the lessons that I can learn from it. I hope that this video has given you a clear picture of my vision for Yandere Sim. Thank you for following the development of Yandere Simulator. Here we can see a girl talking to a boy. I think she likes him. How cute. But who's over there? Hmm, she seems a little too concerned with those two students over there. And she looks kind of familiar. What does she have to say? You bitch! That's my Ikesugi kun! <gasps> Wait, is she one of those phantom thieves of hearts? What are you doing with someone else's man? <laughs>
Burn, Trevi, bitch! Burn and bleed in a bloodstorm! I'll never, ever let anyone else have him. Ikesugi-kun belongs to me. Only me. This girl has issues.